Peace, love, and balance, y'all. Peace, love, and balance, y'all. Okay, the Copper Queen is back. All right, let me let me sip my tea real quick. I made some tea, y'all. I got to get on here and really tell y'all about the entire trip. Okay, y'all know I just got back from Houston, Texas, Monday, and I did not get to complete my mission, and I was so heartbroken about it, y'all. I'm for real, like. If you don't know by now, I'm truly passionate about my purpose, especially now that I found my way back to my purpose and I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. You know what I'm saying? This ain't, this is my spiritual awakening, y'all. Like, you know, as Beyonce say, I woke up like this. So I used, I've always wanted, to, I've been a reader since I was a little girl. I'll tell y'all this, since I was six. And it wasn't, you know, accepted when I was growing up at all. And it's still just now starting to become more accepting. You know what I'm saying? People are still scared of people like myself, witches and brujas. So, and they be, have been lied to forever about what our purpose here on earth is. We are the gatekeepers. We are the landlords. Okay, literally, that's what landlord really meant. We take care of the land. Okay, we we take care of the animal. That's that's just in my heart. I love animals. I love the land. When I was in Houston, that's the first thing I did when I was going through what I was going through. I just I have to get in some nature. So I went to this beautiful garden park and it really did lift my spirit. But it was doing the best it could to keep me lifted while I was feeling real low, y'all. I was low. That was a big spiritual attack. So look, that that's that's crazy, y'all. That whole situation. How let me tell you how it started. How when I got to the airport. My flight was an easy flight to Houston. And when I got to Houston, I found that my luggage had been sent on a later flight. So I wasn't going to have my stuff to get to my event on the first day. But then they said it may be, it's going to get delivered to me and it was going to be fine. So I just went ahead and Uber to my hotel so I can get ready. And had the paperwork that they gave me to get in touch with everybody. But I couldn't get nobody on the phone. I couldn't get nobody on the phone. This is the Friday, last Friday. And I'm in Houston, Texas. And I'm like, darn, they, the lines was tied up. So I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. And I was just feeling like, what am I supposed to do? My first night here and this happened. Y'all, if you don't know, I, uh, the Copper Queen got anxiety. And I was really doing everything I could to not be turned up. You know what I'm saying? Just staying calm, okay? And I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of myself because a long time ago, I would have had a meltdown, had a panic attack, had an anxiety attack, you know, couldn't breathe. And I'm, I'm, I'm breaking that spell. You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm getting rid of that kind of stuff, you know, and I, you know, and it didn't happen. So I didn't get to get to my event the first night. I just stayed in my hotel room. But the next day I was like, okay. I, I tried to call them again. Couldn't get through. I'm talking about I couldn't get nobody on the phone. I even waited on the phone for two hours one time for two hours straight no answer you just was standing on hold being in line i'm like gracious all right so i just decided you know what i ended up getting on the live from houston telling y'all about a couple updating y'all about stuff in my room but i started to get out i knew about a mystic conference that i was going to be a vendor at so that's the thing i was going to be a vendor at another event too and i was going to try to slide in like two different events in one place why not right but their vendor fee was a bit too high for me. They wanted like two hundred dollars, and I, as much as I support them, I, I paid uh, ninety five dollars to get in. So you had to pay at the time it was like ninety seven dollars. You had to pay ninety seven dollars to be a vendor, plus another ninety seven dollars to uh, be a uh, to to come in. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. That's just a bit too much for me. So I still went. Obviously, I was supposed to go, so I still went. I paid my ninety five dollars to be uh, to just go and be a guest instead of having to pay another double there to be a vendor too. So I still met a lot of people. I met a lot of people. I met Brother Yusuf. I posted my picture. I was so excited about that because I really wanted to meet him and work with him. I'm big on working with other Aboriginals and Moors and and people that are on missions similar to mine, on similar similar spiritual leaders. Like I'm happy. I mean, I used to just always have to watch this stuff online, y'all. That's I'm a YouTuber, so I'm used to watching him online before I was the copper queen, seeing all them doing this and knowing when it was going to be my turn to get in, you know what I'm saying, and be a part of helping build the, the universe, the people up spiritually, because that's the air. This is 5D, y'all. This is real. People are either stepping up to the plate or finding someone to follow to be guided, and we got to make sure people that are in these spiritual seats 
are really going to be doing it divinely. That's why I teach y'all about balance. You know what I'm saying? So it was a, this trip was a real, it was a big deal to me. Like my, me being a healer and an oracle is not some kind of play thing. It's not a play thing, y'all. I have, I got called to do that. That man that I worked for in, uh, in, in Houston, Texas, he called me. I don't know how he found out about me. And he just hit me up on Instagram talking about, we need you. And let me tell y'all, y'all, the area that I was in, because y'all know I can't just help the rich. I got to help everybody. That's another thing. I done been to the hood, to the gutters areas to help people and do readings. And this, to most people, that's dangerous, right? But I'm protected. I was sit there. I was caught. So the area that I went, it was definitely a kind of rundown. You know what I'm saying? It was prostitutes around there, but he can't help it that that's his reality every day, right? And he wants healers to come in his neighborhood to change that. And he bought property in his own hood. He bought a gym and a piece of land, and he's trying to find a way to bring healing to his, his community because it's so tore up. I was like, that's what we do every day in Nashville, Tennessee, trying to change these environments that may be bad now we turned it into more positive things we got different programs and stuff now for everybody and i couldn't say no to him and not come so i came but it was definitely something trying to attack me from coming to help with that area i'm for real y'all my luggage got completely destroyed but you know what all my jewelry was not missing none of my equipment and my jewelry inside the trunk was missing or destroyed you want to know why because i put a spell on my stuff if somebody would have stole something because somebody done stole from me before y'all I was at an event and somebody done stole from me before and that person is not doing well. He tried to re-gift what he stole from me to somebody else. And when somebody told me about it, they was like, oh yeah, such and such gave me this. I still want to buy one from you. But he gave me this and said he didn't want it no more. And I thought that was crazy. Now it's doing great for him, the person that he gifted it to. But it was, it's going to, the powers of my, my jury is going to renege if you steal from me. It's going to cause you harm. It's an amulet. So don't play about my stuff. Don't play about my jewelry. So you can't steal from me. So they already knew. They felt the energy from that stuff. So none of my stuff got stolen and none of my stuff got damaged. Only thing that got damaged was the trunk itself. The I, I told you it was like a 400 something dollar investment. So they tore my trunk up real good. But thankfully, I grew up with men, like I tell y'all, and my uncle, most of my uncles and my stepfather, my uncle that just passed, they were builders. So I just went ahead and said, I got to figure this out, y'all. I was sad. I was thinking about actually, but I didn't have none of my stuff to put it back together when I was in Houston. So I was like, I can't even make it look good real quick because I ain't got my tools, you know. So when I came home, I definitely fixed her up. I had to get Gorilla gorilla glue, Gorilla tape, you know what I'm saying, screws. I turned to my uncle and bought the build up in here and I had to put it because I'm still going to utilize this trunk until they end up paying me my money. But I didn't get to do the event, y'all. That was crazy. And he was begging me. He was like, look, we really need you. He was telling me about everything that's going on in his neighborhood. He was really the only man. And he was just like, we need you here. Please come back. Because they having this all month long. So I'm going to try to come back. But it's definitely, this is what's happening out here. These areas and different people are going through spiritual attacks in their neighborhood. And it's people that's waking up in all cultures. Because these are Latino people. They need help. They need help. And he he knew it. His heart was so pure and so genuine. I, I was crying, y'all. Because I couldn't do my purpose. I couldn't do my job. It was people there that their ancestors been calling me to come over there and needing their their daughters and children knowledge to receive message. They didn't even want me to leave, but I but he told me you gotta take pictures of this. Cause if I wanna took pictures of everything and counted everything before I tried to start selling stuff, I wouldn't be able to prove really anything. So I couldn't even it was y'all, it was heartbreaking. I couldn't even do my purpose, but that's what it was about. That's what spiritual warfare is. All right. That was crazy. Now, I know most people looking at this, so were you protected? Yeah, I was protected because guess what? No harm came to me. No harm came to me. You physical property, yeah, but no harm came to me at all. Well, so it, I had actually people just taking care of me the whole time I was there. It was crazy. I had somebody come pick me up and take me to the store. People just befriended me and took care of me while I was there because they seen what was happening to me. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't even have to really stress about anything. It was more like the stress that I didn't know what they was doing with my stuff and my jewelry. And the fact that I, I was like, the, the trip itself, the hotel, the flight. And then they, and then they made me pay $105 to ship my luggage because it's full of jewelry. It's heavy, so it's over 50 pounds. So I had to pay 30, $135 both times for them to tear up my stuff and ruin my whole trip. So yeah, I spent over $1,500 just on the trip itself uh 
on top of just all that stuff and Ubers and Lyfts and everything. It's crazy. So that was a, a serious spiritual attack. Their purpose was to stop me and discourage me. And it was tough, y'all. I was upset, but I had to stay balanced. Trust me, I wanted to fly. That's what they wanted. They wanted me to fly off the handles, take it out on other people. You know what I'm saying? Just act a fool and, and be the negative image that they want to see. The angry melanin woman, right? The angry black woman. And I wouldn't do it. And I just wouldn't do it. <laughs> I was like, no, I held it together. I held it together because that ain't going to help. That wasn't going to help flying off and cussing somebody out and doing all that stuff. And it definitely wasn't going to get me what I wanted, the results I wanted. Okay, because I didn't stay in harmony and balance, y'all. But that was a tough lesson I had to go through and really keep it together the whole time that was happening to me. And I had to look at all the good things that were happening. I still went out and had fun. I got to do a whole bunch of stuff that I was going to do anyway. And I just didn't have to work. Obviously, I think that even the universe wanted me to take a break because I'm always working. I'm always doing my purpose. I can't help it. I'm addicted to it. And I wake up and go to sleep wanting to do wanting to do stuff for people. You know, that's just because I finally I had I, y'all know I done been in counseling and I done went through healing from my childhood trauma. And I decided to be a part of the solution instead of part of the problem. OK, I just decided to do that instead of continuing the hurt and the pain that has us divided, that has us you know hating each other and not wanting to see each other be successful and not wanting to see each other and competing with each other i chose to be a part of the so so solution to that and not the problem so i gotta do this i don't know if y'all remember some of y'all i told y'all a while back before i even dropped the fact that i was a bruja i never told people this about me nobody ever knew my closest friends they kind of knew but they didn't know you see what i'm saying but uh but but yeah i didn't want to do this because this purpose is heavy y'all to to this purpose is super heavy it ain't light okay that's why i tell you you can't just do white magic you gotta do black magic and y'all know since this happened i've been in the kitchen i came home i've been in my garden i had to talk to the answer you know you can connect to the ancestors doing root work i was definitely out there talking to my trees and my plants i came in here and did some rituals with some herb you know herb magic is real yeah i'm a green witch and i'm a kitchen witch because they gonna pay me for what they did. I was like, you gonna tell the copper queen stuff? They, they, this is my thing. Even other people were shocked about it. Like the people that worked at the airlines, they like, did they just purposely tear up your stuff? Exactly. Yeah, they did. You gotta know when you're under spiritual attacks. Y'all remember that movie that um, what is his name? What is his name? I should know this. Anyways, uh, I can't remember his name, but it's a brother that paid in the movie where. It was a spirit following him around and they kept trying to attack him by touching. It was kind of like the Matrix. It was kind of like the Matrix. And that spirit was just jumping into everybody's body. Same thing like the Supernatural, that Supernatural show. Demons can jump into people's bodies now, y'all. I told y'all about that. So I am I wouldn't be surprised if some demons jumped into some of them people that knew that was my luggage. Because I had my, uh, I had my, uh, you know, your tags that you put on it to identify your bag. I had my witch tags on mine. With the pentagram. So they knew I was a witch. They knew it. Come on. They had to search my stuff. So they found my crystal balls and all that. I wouldn't be surprised if some of these low vibrational people. That they don't. That, that, they turned into. They they know who that stuff was. And they tore it up. Because tearing somebody's luggage up. That's just not what's up. You tore the thing up. And then you sent it out there like that. That was definitely intentional. What else could it be? What else could it have been? That's why I tell y'all. When you get into this purpose. Spiritual attacks like that come with it. All right. But they didn't win though. Because I still got two more events this month I'm going to go to. They're going to be successful. And that's what they want to They want to stop me. That's really what it is. He even said that the dude that I wasn't able that they had the event that I was going for. He even said, he said, you got to check your energy. He said, check whoever's around you. Because there may be some people around you that's sending you bad energy because we need you here. And they don't want you. They don't want this. Okay. And if it be like, if people don't know that if you jealous of me or jealous of anybody, it don't have to be me. But when you're jealous of people and hating on people, you don't even have to be saying anything. You don't have to even be in contact with them because you're thinking negative. Like you hope they don't make it. Or you 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 watch them fall down. Look at look, you know those negative thoughts are manifesting quickly now. We don't realize this is 5D. Your thoughts become things just like that. So if you're thinking negative about anybody, you can cast a spell on them. Just hoping they'll fail. Just hoping they'll fail. Just saying that that's why they're gonna fail. You know what I'm saying? That right there 
It's an attack and some dark force is going to utilize that. So a lot of chosen ones are under attack right now. Anybody dealing as a Reiki healer, any kind of counselors and therapists, the healers, or anybody in a purpose like mine, readers are under attack right now. It's it's crazy. And y'all got to learn how y'all got to protect yourselves. Y'all really do. It's tough out here. It's getting that this is the spiritual warfare and we in the thick of it now. I, it just every time I think we about ready to be wrapping this up. Man, they start coming in heavy. All right. They start coming in heavy. But they can't never win though. They can't never win though. So let me tell y'all about something else that happened. While I was at the airport, leaving, this is leaving. All that happened before. So I decided not to go to the event. I just enjoyed my weekend. And I just said, you know what? I'm gonna have to replan this trip because too much had happened. And I still enjoyed myself. And I'm happy I did. When I got to the airport the next day, my flight was supposed to leave 10 o'clock Monday. I was supposed to be gone. So I got to the airport like 8, 15, 8, 30. And when I got there, you know, it's crazy chaos. I don't even want to go into all the crazy, crazy chaos to check in, but it was crazy. So I get through the checkout. And when you go into check your self check-in bag, because I had to, remember, pay another $135 to ship my luggage that they already had tore up. Just for them to tear it up completely some more. And they literally, this man, y'all. It was crazy. I, this is when I this is when I uh, when I went off, y'all. I'm about to tell y'all what happened. I went off. So I got to the airport. This dude sneezed in his hand. He ain't had no gloves on or nothing. Sneezed in his bare hands. A chunk of snot was on his hand. I saw the whole thing. I'm a very observant person. Okay? And he just shook it off like that and then picked up one of our bags. I snapped the freak off, y'all. Hold up, hold up. I said, you nasty little bee. I said, I said, hey. I'm not getting on this plane. This mf -er just tried to kill us. I said, all this COVID shit going around and this motherfucker just did what he just did. I said, that motherfucker need to be fired right now. I was going to freak out. This happened Monday, y'all. At that point, I was like, y'all done told my shit up and ruined my whole trip. Now I'm about to, now I'm about to show the fuck out, okay? Y'all crazy. So, everybody was looking at me like I was like, oh my God. But then everybody started joining in like, man, yeah, this is crazy. Exactly. I said, because then they delayed our flight. We didn't leave till like 12 something, y'all. Because something was wrong with our flight. It was an electrical problem, so it wasn't no AC on the on the flight. And y'all know I told you my AC went out before I left home. And I know so many people that AC don't went out. It's just that time of season. So no electricity on the plane. So pilots started walking off. They didn't want to deal with they was going to other airlines and or and stuff. And that it was just getting worse and worse. So then they finally found us a plane, and then it had too much fuel in it. So we couldn't fly because it was supposed to go to a, out of the country. And on longer trips, that type of fuel is fine. But on a short trip, type from Houston to Nashville, they was like, they can't do it. So we had to wait for, after we already had to wait for somebody to fix the plane because it didn't have AC and it was an electrical issue. We had to wait for them to fix, you know, to uh, defuel the plane. Now, given that my flight was supposed to leave at 10 instead of, you know, 12. I ain't even gonna trip about it. That was a good two hours because I don't hear people being in airports for like eight hour layovers and I just ain't. So it could have been worse. So I was grateful. And I most importantly, we wanted to fly safely. But y'all, after I flew off the handles, everybody started asking me what my Instagram was. Everybody started running up to me like, are you okay? I'm talking about everybody was just sweet to me. I told you, I'm protected everywhere I go. These are total strangers. I had total strangers add me on, on social media. This little girl even gave me a hug. She said, I understand exactly how you feel. That was gross. I'm like, exactly. And I and she started mess. She made sure I got home safe and everything, y'all. She messaged me, did you make it home? And I'm that's what I'm saying. People, so I I couldn't even look negative at the whole trip. People was just taking care of me. People just seen my light and they knew that this wasn't right. You know what I mean? My Uber drivers took care of me. Okay. Yes, yes, oh, yes, of course. But y'all like. They just take care of you. My Uber driver, that's what I had Uber drivers tell me, if you need a ride, take my number down and I'll come get you. And I had two different Uber drivers that took care of me and I didn't even have to call them on Uber. And they like, when you come back in town, just call me and I'm going to make sure you need. I'm like, y'all, I am a chosen one. Okay. And they, they, that's what they knew they was doing. But let me tell y'all what that captain did, y'all. The captain liked me now. Look, when I got on that plane, he gave me a whole bag of One United cleaning wipes. <laughs> It was crazy, y'all. He said, how you doing, Miss L? He knew my name and everything. He, my, he said, here, we got these for you. You keep those. And I was like, thank you. I said, now give everybody else some. They started handing them out to everybody that was getting on the plane. Everybody got an individual one, but they gave me a whole goddamn bag. Hell yeah. Don't ever let that dude do that crap again.
all this COVID, even though COVID is over, and, and but still, people still been getting COVID, and that was nasty. He was working, touching people's bags, y'all. Do y'all know I came home and disinfected everything? I had, that's what I gotta clean. I'm tired because I gotta clean my jury next. I'm not, ain't no telling who was touching my jury. Okay, and I'm not selling it until I cleanse it. So I got to cleanse all the jewelry that I got and everything that they done put their hands on. Because people like his nasty butt touching people's jewelry. Touching put, touching our stuff. Touching our stuff. I was like, but y'all, the captain was even nice to me. They made sure I had everything I needed. It was crazy. That, and I'm taking, look, I'm keeping these. I appreciate it because I do need these. I carry these in my, my backpack because I'm a germaphobe. Y'all, I'm a germaphobe. Hell yeah, give me a whole bag of sanitizer wipes, okay? But they know me at United Airlines. <laughs> y'all, they know the Copper Queen. They, I'm like, don't ever. So I'm going to have to think of something. So this one thing. They're going to replace that trunk. I'm going to still keep the one because I don't put it back together now. Thank you so much, dear. I'm keeping my trunk. I'm keeping my trunk because I done built it and put it back together again. And I can still utilize it. But they buying another one. They buying another one, period. They and they think they not. They I ain't even gonna say they think they not. I think they know they are. Cause I caused a scene. Like I had had it up to there. I have remained calm the entire time of my whole because my whole trip wasn't ruined. I still had fun. And that's what I had to remember about balance about. I actually had a blast. I got to meet people and I got to meet Brother Yusuf and his wife. I didn't, you know, and, and other spiritual leaders. It you know, it I ain't gotta always work. I was like, okay, I got a quick vacation. And I actually succeeded and got there and back safely. Okay, so you can't just look at the bad side of stuff. So I wasn't, I really wasn't upset because my entire trip wasn't one. This, just the business aspect of it was interrupted. Okay, but at least I had money. Because some people in that situation could have been trapped. You know what I'm saying? And didn't have the money to pay for all those expenses to make sure they was all right. You know what I mean? So I look at the bright side of things and that's how I was able to hold it together. But that dude, during the checkout, doing that snot thing with his hand and throwing it on the ground and touching our stuff, he got cussed out. Everybody loved me, though. <laughs> Everybody loved me. Nobody was mad at me. People kept talking to me, and people just sat near me. I was like, that's what I'm saying, y'all. People just started protecting me, I pre and I appreciated it. I appreciate it. Because me, what it was was everybody don't know how to speak up the way that I do. People be scared. People are scared to speak up, or they said they're scared of what will happen. People are scared to go to jail. This one dude said, I appreciate you because I'm, I'm on. He was like, I'm on probation. I ain't even supposed to be flying right now. And I ain't got time to get in no incident and, and, get, and get his probation officer called. I said, dang, man. So I helped him out. Me snapping, everybody was thanking me for snapping on that airline because they were sick of it. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a lot of people on that airline to get re-incompensated for, for, for stuff because it was, it was so crazy. It was so okay. The whole plane, we was like talking. Everybody was just, it was like a whole family reunion or something. <laughs> we all felt the same way. So that's what I that's what I mean by energy transformation. And I'm an empath, so I kind of could feel everybody was pissed off. I knew I wasn't the only person feeling all this energy. We all together. Most people just don't speak up about it and hold it in. Now I decided to let mine loose. I choose when to let mine loose, and I am in control of it, and I know how much to let out. See, I didn't start throwing stuff. And, you know, and it caused a harm, but they did my, but my throat chakra went off. I have every right to speak up. Cause if nobody would have ever spoke up, everybody, that flight would have been frustrated. You know what I'm saying? The pilot, the energy would have been bad. And look, the pain was already having electrical uh, problems and all this stuff. So I, we had, you have to release. And that was just my release. And everybody, and then, and then after that, I could feel the energy go down at the airport. And everything. People was like, thank you. And coming up to me like shaking my hand, y'all. <laughs> I was like, yes. that This is unacceptable. And y'all have a right. And I said, if I was y'all, I would do them reviews on this airline. Y'all, we got to start doing that. Stop being scared to leave these reviews when you have these experiences so they can get better. If they don't never get complained on and they keep getting away with this stuff, we don't never sue and file complaints. Nothing will ever happen. We just let people get away with stuff. I ain't letting you get away with nothing. All right. I'm not letting them get away with nothing. I'm staying on this whole case. I'm prepared to get a lawyer involved if they even think about trying to deny me. All right? If they even think about trying to deny me, I, I already got a lawyer lined up. I already got a lawyer lined up because... But I don't think that's going to happen, y'all. I mean, 
They pretty much know who I am at this point. I was very nice and kind the entire time. Like, the entire time. Nobody could ever say I had an attitude with anybody up until that point. So, when I had told them all that I had been going through the whole trip, they couldn't even tell that I was able to be in a positive energy. Because this woman said I would have been done, cussed somebody out. They was even t It was people even telling me, you should lie and say stuff is missing. And I had to tell people, no, I wouldn't be a hill if I did that. I'm not going to lie. I said, I know how much this trip cost me. And I'm going to give them the right calculation. Because, see, if I lie, I'm no longer a person of integrity. I don't need to make the situation worse than what it is. It already was bad. Yes, I am too, sweetie. Thank you. I'm happy I got my stuff back, y'all. That was my personal jury that I made, and I, that really hurt my feelings, y'all. I was worried. I'm, those pieces are, you can't steal my stuff. You know what I'm saying? Those You can't steal my power, baby. I'm like, it's not going to work. So I'm really happy that all my stuff, that's why I told people, none of my stuff was missing. Not one thing. Not one thing. Only thing that was towed up was the case because they came. They would have been, it would have been so crazy for them to tear up the jury. Oh, you can't tear up that jury. It's too precious. It's the energy, it's the energy into that. So I'm like, so I'm happy that I held it, held myself up during that, y'all. I really am. And y'all know I'm going to Atlanta, Georgia next weekend. I still had to get a rental car. That's what I was so hoping to have so much more money. So I could like I was gonna spend more time in Atlanta, you know, hoping to have more money. But now I had to go into my backup stash just to pay for for this trip to get come there and back. You know what I'm saying? So I got to rent a car, and that's really all I can really do. I was planning on staying there for at least like I was gonna ride down like Thursday, give me a little quick vac. That was the vacation I was gonna trip because I was gonna go to the spa, and I was still gonna do stuff in Houston too. These are my trips. I I get to travel, and just because I'm traveling for business don't mean I can't. Go there a couple of days early to enjoy myself. That's and then go to work. You know what I'm saying? But I'm still gonna do that. That's what I'm saying. I'm still. It's still gonna be successful. I'm going. Like I said, if y'all gonna be in, anybody in Atlanta, Georgia this weekend, I'm doing the Takers events with the Moors. You you'll make it back in Atlanta. Yes, I know. I thank you, sweetie. I really do feel that too. I feel positive about this trip. You know, my my Houston trip, even though it didn't. You know, that's why I was so disappointed when it happened like that. But I do feel good about Atlanta. So I'm um and and then honestly since I didn't sell anything now I got plenty to sell in Atlanta you know what I mean so I'm looking forward to still doing that that's on Saturday and that's called the Takers event and I do have that flyer on my page if y'all wanna uh check that out if you know anybody in Atlanta Georgia let them know I'll be there uh and let them know about the event y'all know I'm a more and this event is about uh obtaining your sovereignty okay knowing that you could be a free person like myself uh I'm actually at my last step of my nationalization and i'm waiting on my american national passport and they do take a long time on this process that's why i've been doing it for the last couple of years because paperwork because you're undoing everything you did to be a u.s slave to them you have to undo all that and redo all that you know what i'm saying as a free person and sometimes that stuff get tiring because you keep getting delayed by them they be taking forever to mail stuff back to you and when they holding your information and you need your information to send it to somebody else so i don't had to get like four copies of my birth certificate because they'll keep holding your birth certificate if you don't got another copy to send something off to start some some other part of the process everybody need that birth certificate y'all know that birth certificate is valuable so i i just keep going back and getting copies of it because you're not gonna stop my paperwork just because you're trying to hold my paper and that's what they trying to do y'all that's what i'm saying they trying to stop us from being free and they trying to stop us from being healers they trying to stop us from being more our purpose we scientists we healers trying to demonize us but is this they they don't want me breaking these spells that's what i was there for that's what i was in houston for that man was begging me not to leave it's some spells in, around there. it is it's a it's a heat that area and so shout out to to the magic trap she got a whole sister circle right now, uh, that, or not even a sister circle. It's a, a community circle and cleansing these sites that these people have got murdered in. Like, it was a little girl recently got murdered here in Nashville, Tennessee, off Dickinson Road, and they don't clean up the blood and stuff. That energy is, it's, that's what's going on out here. And the energy just gets bad in that whole neighborhood because too much bloodshed. And you ain't releasing the spirit. So, shout out to my sister. That's my sister right there. <laughs> She taking care of our city and going out there and cleansing the energy spiritually with herbs and candles and saying affirmations so that soul can be free. Okay, we can't keep this. It's a, we gotta cause, so that energy can leave. Okay, and be utilized in a more positive way. But we that was what was going on in that neighborhood, and he needed me. I gotta go back. I gotta plan the trip again. 
He was, he, he need me. He was, he was crying y'all. That's what I'm saying. This is a man. And I tell y'all, y'all need, we got to be sensitive to our men. He was, he know they need help. He was, he's, a, he's helping in a, in his area. He know they need help. He being a prophet of his area by himself as one man. And I was like, you know what? I said, I'm going to come back. I said, I'm going to help you. He said, we need you here. He said, please, I know you got to deal with this, but I need your help. He said, and I was like, man, and we, I'm, that's what I'm saying. We got to, we got to step into our purposes, y'all. I'm happy I'm in mine, but it, but it, they do be trying me, though. <laughs> that was like the biggest attack I feel like I done been in. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to do more protection spells on myself before I leave. Okay? Like, for real, y'all. Y'all, that was my spill. Uh, like I said, I'm back safely, though, and that's the main thing I'm happy about. I feel like I am going to do a reading today. I want to do that on the second one. I don't want to do it on this one. I'm going to do a reading today, possibly, maybe later on, who knows, or maybe right after this. So get y'all some divine messages and stuff, because we still, I do feel like we're in spiritual warfare right now. This is the, uh, this is the time the, uh, the new world order is really kicking in now, and the battle with angels and demons is happening right now. That's why so much, much chaos is starting to happen out of nowhere, you know what I'm saying, for no reason. Even, probably some of y'all going through things too and don't know what's going on because somebody the frequency they trying to pull it down these forces out that's why i tell y'all about staying cleansed and stuff and getting these readings going outside in nature y'all gotta stay cleansed stay cleansed y'all stay elevated smoke y'all some weed that's nothing i got home baby smoke me some weed smoke some weed all right smoke y'all some weed it's nothing wrong with it y'all need it y'all don't be doing nothing else some, some mushrooms is good too i got some of those some shrooms Y'all got to start activating this brain, okay? So y'all can see what's going on. Is that pineal gland and third eye got to be open so y'all can see these demons. That's what I'm saying. I seen demons when I was there, y'all. When I got there, I seen the demons. I was looking at all them, and they was, some of them was like, they, some of them didn't want to be there. They, they possessed. They're trapped inside their bodies by this demon that has taken over them. And I was there to set them free. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. All right, and I can see, and he was like, "I know, I, I applaud him, y'all." We it's a lot, and I need help. That's why I give props to all my sisters and brothers that doing things to help us. I need, we all need each other. It's time to clean our cities up and our homes up and our communities up, and get out here. And that's what I am. That's what I got to get out here. But I think that's all I got. I'm still. I happen to wait to hear back with this claim right now. They said it could take up to 14 days or a month. Y'all know how they do. So I'm going to have to stay on them, email and all that, and go through all that as I keep going on. Because I'm not about to let this go. I'm not, though. And I ask for y'all to send positive affirmations to the Copper Queen to really help me, you know, stay elevated. So I can continue giving y'all these divine messages and, you know, doing my purpose, y'all. And safely, you know what I mean? Safely do my purpose because I got to care about me. All right? So, look, I'm going to ring my bell even though I didn't ring my bell when I came in. All right? Er, air. Fire, water, spirit, y'all. Till next time, peace, love, and balance.